Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 2. So we're going to be reading Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 13. The Holy Spirit comes on Shavuot. Now this is a very, very exciting portion of scripture. And I know a lot of you know this scripture, but we're going to go through this and we're going to read it in a fresh way. And we're going to get more out of this than what we've ever gotten before. So this is going to be very, very awesome. Okay. Very, very good. And so this scripture there's so much packed into the scripture. I cannot possibly do this all in one teaching. I'm going to have to break it down to at least two or three teachings. You know, really, I could, we could talk about this for hours, okay? So basically what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to be just touching on a subject here, touching on a subject there. And I encourage you just to meditate upon what we're talking about. You know, after you listen to this teaching, meditate upon it, okay? Think about what we're going to talk about because it is going to be awesome. This is the darling scripture of the Pentecostals and the Charismatics. I know this is where it's at, okay? This is where the promise of the Father comes upon the disciples. This is where the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples in a way that Jesus spoke of in John chapter 14, 15, 16. And this is where the new covenant actually comes into effect. So get ready for a very good spiritual meal. Let's get at it. This is Acts chapter 2. Now when the day of Pentecost had come... Now, for those of you who don't know, the day of Pentecost is actually the Hebrew or the Jewish festival of Shavuot, okay? Shavuot, or Pentecost, commemorates the day, the day when Moses actually got the Torah or the commandments of God from God on the tablets of stone, okay? This is when God descended on the mountain and came down with his laws, and never forget, the laws of God are reflective of the character of God, okay? The laws of God and the character of God, the laws of God and the person of God is inseparable. So it's very important for you to really connect the two. What happened in Exodus and what happened here in Acts chapter 2 is so interconnected. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come, so this was a Jewish holiday the holiday of Shavuot. This is when God gave the law. God gave the commandments to Moses. They were all with one accord in one place. So here in Acts chapter 2, they were all together in one accord in one place. In the same way, the people were all together in one place in one accord when Moses received the commandments of God. Verse 2, suddenly there came from the sky a sound like a rushing of a mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. So let's go back to the tour and see what happened on that day of Pentecost. Okay, the day of Pentecost with Moses and here we got the day of Pentecost with the disciples in the upper room. So first of all, it was the day of Pentecost. It was the day of Pentecost then too, when Moses received the Torah. Second of all, they were all together in one place in one accord. It was that way too with Moses. Thirdly, sounds, okay, sound, supernatural sounds, okay, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And you know it, there was supernatural sounds, okay, in the day of Pentecost with Moses. Verse 3 Tongues like fire appeared and were distributed to them and one sat on each of them. Tongues of fire basically means just flames of fire. So fire appeared on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And you know it, fire appeared on the day of Pentecost, Shavuot, back in Exodus. Verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak. Now, this is a very, very important verse right here because, you know, the whole Christian church Pentecostal denomination hangs on this verse, you know, because to them, speaking in tongues as they define it is like the pinnacle of of your experience with God. It's like, if you get that, wow, you've got it. You've reached the top, you know? Now, I'm not going to get into the details here into this teaching, but in the next teaching, I am going to get into the details about the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. 
Verse 5, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under the sky. Here we've got mixed nations meeting on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. But you know, in Exodus, when God gave the Torah to Moshe, when God gave the Torah to Moses, there was the mixed multitude there too. Exodus chapter 12. It says very clearly that there was a mixed multitude gathered. Okay, Some people think that the Torah is only for the Jews. Not so. It says very clearly in the Torah that it was given not only to Moses and the Jewish people, but also to the mixed multitude. And if you read the Torah, and I'm talking especially about the books of Moses, if you read it, you will see lots of different instructions, lots of different commands and laws that are set out for the stranger or for other people other than the Jewish people, okay? For those who are adopted by the Jewish people, for those who are with the Jewish people, for those who join themselves with the Jewish people. So don't think that the Torah is only for the biological Jew. Verse 6, when this sound was heard, the multitude came together and were bewildered because everyone heard them speaking in his own language. So we've got people from all over the world, so to speak, okay, gathered in Jerusalem, in the upper room, all together, in one accord, in one place. The mixed multitude, just as it was back in the book of Exodus, the mixed multitude gathered. And these obviously were people who didn't understand other people. There were, they were people who spoke different languages, probably different African languages there different Indian languages, possibly, possibly Chinese or an ancient form of English, okay? These different people were there. Maybe they didn't understand the Hebrew. Probably not, okay? The disciples were there. They could not communicate with these people because these people didn't understand Hebrew. But when God came in the Spirit, okay, God gave the disciples the ability to speak in languages that other people could understand. It wasn't a bunch of babble back in those days, okay? And like I said, I got a lot to say about this in the next teaching. You know, the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. But we need to know that there were people there from all over the world, so to speak, okay? From all kinds of different nations, all different languages. They couldn't understand one another. And God supernaturally, without expecting it, gave the disciples the ability to speak in a language that other people could finally understand. Verse 7, They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, aren't all these who speak Galileans? How do we hear everyone in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Okay, proselytes, those who are not biologically Jewish, but they're there anyway, joining the Jewish people. 11. Cretans and Arabians, we hear them speaking in our languages the mighty works of God. Wouldn't you like to know exactly what they said? <laughs> you see, we've got a lot of details that are left out. And wouldn't you like to know exactly what the disciples said in tongues? Wouldn't you want to know exactly what was said? All it tells us is just a very, an almost vague blanket description. They were telling everybody the mighty works of God. Verse 12, they were all amazed and were perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Others mocked and said, they are filled with new wine. Seek the Lord with all your heart and you will find him. Call upon him and he will, as he promised, show you great and mighty things.